Now, anyone remember when we talked about economic and accounting costs? Do you remember? Remember that guy, the accounting guy, who got $1,000, and they went to put it in the safe. They took the $1,000, they put it in the safe. And this is their business. And then at the end of the year, they get their accounting statement. I have $1,000 in my safe. And that's the total profit is the 1000 that they have in their safe. Okay, that's accounting. Yes. Now in economics, my friend, you have to put minus opportunity cost, which is if you put it in the bank, they will give you $100. And you didn't get the $100. So you lost $100. You see? So that's going to be... So now, how much is my uh, economic profit? longer than a thousand it's only 900 because I lost a hundred so let's see this in other in terms economic costs needs not conform to actual dollar okay accountants they often count dollars costs only and and ignore any resource use that does not result in an explicit dollar cost so did I pay out a hundred dollar no accountants would say we didn't pay. That's not a cost. That's what accountants do. Accounting costs accounting costs are the direct dollar cost of producing goods or services. So if I have a labor and I pay them eighty-five dollars, that's a cost because I paid it, right? If I have uh, if I bought lemon, I have to record it. If I bought the machine, I have to record it. That's what accountants do. They record. Now, this includes any actual out-of-pocket expenses. Only out-of-pocket. Not out-of-pocket, it's not cost. That's accounting. Now, in economics, no, we've got a different story. The essential economic question is how many resources are used in production. So we need to ask, economic cost is the dollar value of all the resources used to produce a good or a service, the opportunity cost of resource use. It means not just the money and its cost, okay? Even time. the time. You see, opportunity costs are counted by economists, but not necessarily by accountants, okay? Ec economic costs and accounting costs will diverge, okay? Whenever any factor of production is not paid, an explicit cost, you see? So sometimes if we, uh, you know, they will be uh, the same if we actually pay. Uh, so if we go and we pay that $100 cost, then accountants will see it, but they don't. Now, economic costs, economists consider both explicit and what we call implicit costs. So explicit is what we know, is what accountants do, and then implicit is what uh, economists count. And the economic cost will be explicit plus implicit. And what's the cost of your homework? Some out-of-pocket expenses are incurred, perhaps paying someone to write term papers. Okay. Now there are implicit costs too, which is the value of the next best use of your time. Represents the opportunity cost of doing your homework. Okay. Did you guys understand this example of homework? Understood the example of homework or not? Yes. No. Now let's see. Uh, let's say uh, I, you know, uh, someone I need to do the homework. Uh, someone will do the homework for me, and uh, I pay them one hundred dollars to do the homework for me. Now in accounting cost, I paid a hundred dollars. Okay. Do you see? Now the economic cost is that, you know, I spent one hour with this guy to do the homework for me, and at the end of the hour. I paid this guy $100, and this guy took the $100 and went. And I paid that. And accountants, they recorded it. But I myself spent one hour on the same homework. I didn't pay myself. I should be paid. <laughs> Do you see? So if I go and I work, I will get maybe $200. Do you see? So this one hour that I lost is cost. And that's implicit. And that also is counted by economists. You see. So economists will look at this opportunity cost of doing homework. So the explicit that he paid? The explicit is what you paid this other guy, 
And the implicit is what you, did, you know, you should have paid yourself. You see, what you lost. <laughs> now, let's see, economic profit. In economic terms, profit is the difference between total revenue and total economic costs. So that's economic profit. And total profit would be total revenue minus total cost. And then economists will keep a constant eye on profit by keeping track of both explicit and implicit. Do you see? So if you are doing a business, and at the end of the month you get $1,000, okay? And you are getting this, what they call it, you know, harigdam. Do you see? You know, this harigdam, or like too much pressure and headache, and economists will say, hey look, this has a value, and that's an implicit cost, and you need to factor it. Do you see? So that becomes... Uh, now, invest in labor or capital is another question. Now, here is another topic, or it's the last topic in this chapter. It says the U.S. labor force continues to grow by more than a million worker per hour, per year. And capital investments don't keep pace. These added workers will strain production facilities. And... If this occurs, the law of diminishing marginal productivity will push wages lower and will reduce living standards. You see? So here what the people start to think, you know, there's a lot of people going to work. These people, remember guy number eight? You don't want the guy number eight. But if this is the economy, there will be a lot, you know, easy number eights. So, if we have this economy, then we will not have number eight. We will have number eight million. Yeah, like Do you see? Do you see? So here the idea is, should we invest more in labor or in capital? So the more capital we have, then we can take more labor. Okay? But if we t only focus on labor, let's say we take labor and we only focus on labor, 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 and we don't focus on capital and land, then what will these people be? They will be guy number eight. You see, so it's important that you focus also on capital. What's the meaning of focusing the labor of that? Uh, now, let's say there is. A, remember when we talked about education, and military. Let's say education, or uh, uh, or uh, uh, agriculture. Okay. Now, maybe education it will train labor, and agriculture it will develop land. Do you see? So, if you focus on labor. You will have a lot of labor, but this labor, they will be labor number eight. We don't want these people. But we also need to have land. This way we have a lot of land. But we also don't want to have land number eight. Do you see? So we need to focus on both, of course. But it's important to focus also on this idea of capital. It uh, becomes also important if you will have a lot of labor to expand. So... Uh, some uh, possible ways of increasing productivity, including the following, increasing education, vocational training, increasing capital investments. So you need to do them both, and uh, you need to watch out for guy number eight and land number eight. Improvement in productivity will reduce cost. Uh, the ATC, do you know what's ATC? Average total. Average total cost and marginal cost curves, they will shift down when productivity increases. And then what happens? It picks up. It becomes very expensive. That's the end of chapter 5.